Game of Thrones Season 1-7 to The Ultimate Recap Game of Thrones Season 1 Robert Baratheon is king and he and his trophy wife Cersei travel up north to see old buddy Ned Stark who loves to remind everyone in a very bluff northern accent Winter is coming <laughs> Robert asks Ned if he wants to be Hand of the King Ned doesn't want it but he can't refuse Meanwhile Cersei gets caught shagging her own brother Jamie, by Ned's youngest son Bran who gets shoved out of a window crippling but not killing him Ned's sad family join Robert's messed up family and they all head down south to King's Landing, apart from Ned's bastard son, Jon Snow. He joins the Night's Watch at the Wall, a massive structure used to keep the savages in the north far away from the slightly less savage people in the regular north. Tyrion, the dwarf brother of Jaime and Cersei, visits the Wall, leaves, is accused of trying to murder Ned's son and sentenced to a trial at the Eyrie by Ned's sister-in-law, who was a few sandwiches short of a picnic. He chooses trial by combat, and a mercenary called Bronn fights on his behalf for cash. He wins, and Tyrion goes free because... Lannister always pays his debts. Meanwhile, in a much warmer place across the narrow sea, Daenerys Targaryen, who is the daughter of the previous king, gets married off to Dothraki horse lord Khal Drogo. She gets pregnant, eats a heart, and is given three dragon eggs as a wedding gift. Her brother is a dick about the whole thing, so Khal Drogo pours a load of molten gold onto his head and kills him. Later on, Drogo gets mortally wounded, Daenerys tries to save him with blood magic, but instead of resurrecting her hubby, she hatches the dragon eggs and gets three scaly pets for her troubles. Back in King's Landing, Ned discovers that Cersei has been banging her brother Jaime for ages, and the sadistic heir to the throne Joffrey, along with less sadistic heir Tommen, are not Robert's children after all. This puts him in a pickle, because his eldest daughter Sansa is betrothed to marry the sadistic jerk Joffrey. Robert gets killed by a pig, whereupon Ned tells Cersei that he knows a sadistic jerk of a son isn't the true heir. Cersei bribes the city guards, they put Ned on trial, sadistic jerk Joffrey, brackets now king, close brackets, orders his death. Ned dies because it's the law that Sean Bean dies in everything in which he appears. Apart from Sharp. Game of Thrones Season 2. Sean Bean's eldest son Rob is upset about Dad's death, so declares war with the Lannisters. Robert's brother Renly thinks he should be king, so declares war on the Lannisters. Robert's other brother Stannis thinks he should be king, so declares war on Renly, the Lannisters, Rob Stark, Religion, MC Hammer and Christmas. Stannis's ginger bit on the side Melisandre gives birth to a wisp of evil smoke who kills Renly, but none of that really matters because when Stannis attacks King's Landing later in the series, Tyrion burns all his boats with magic fire and saves the city. In the warmer place, Daenerys crosses a desert and ends up in Carth, where the city poshos and Richard O'Brien impersonators try to steal her dragons. It doesn't end well and she leaves. Beyond the wall, Jon Snow pretends to betray the Night's Watch and starts shagging a girl called Egret, who constantly points out in a sexy northern accent that You know nothing. Jon Snow. It's because the wild folk in the north want to all live in the south because they're terrified of the icy zombie creatures called White Walkers who appear at the end of the season to terrorise a fat boy called Sam. In King's Landing, Cersei finds a new wife for jerk King Joffrey, Marjorie, whose grandma is Diana Rigg. Sean Bean's youngest daughter Arya has escaped the city with one of Robert's illegitimate kids and Sansa is held as a hostage. Meanwhile, Sean Bean's son Rob has captured Cersei's lover-slash-brother combo Jamie in battle, but his own mum frees the Kingslayer in exchange for her daughters and sends imposing man Lady Brienne to guard him. Oh, mum. Tell me this isn't true. Finally, former ward of Sean Bean, Theon Greyjoy, who has a fully working penis at this point, destroys Sean Bean's house and pretends to kill his two sons, one of whom was crippled by Jamie Lannister. Remember that? And is now carried around by a simpleton who can only say the word... Hold on. Even you, sweet giant. <laughs> Game of Thrones Season 3. Rob Stark wins a load of battles, but because he disses Walder Frey by not marrying his daughter, he, his mother, his hot new wife, his unborn child, and most of his men are killed at the Red Wedding. It's pretty shocking. This is doubly heartbreaking because Arya Stark and her, her unlikely travelling companion, the Hound, who has a dim view on people who name their sword... Lots of people name their swords. Lots of cunts. ...are literally minutes away from being reunited with them. At staying with weddings, back in King's Landing, Tyrion is forced to marry Sansa, who is not keen. Cersei is told to marry Loras Tyrell, who is not so secretly gay, and conniving political wrangler Littlefinger decides to marry Sean Bean's sister-in-law, who is insane. In the hotter place, Daenerys buys an army of eunuchs by tricking their master and then using a dragon to roast him alive. She then commands these unsullied to kill all the slave owners in the city. She joins forces with a band of mercenaries called the Second Sons, whose leader fancies her, and starts to rule Marine with her longtime friend Jorah Mormont, who fancies her, and retired knight Sir Barristan Selmy, who probably fancies her but is old enough to be her dad. Elsewhere, Jamie Lannister loses a hand, 
Theon Greyjoy loses a penis, but gains a master in the form of Roose Bolton's bonkers bastard Ramsay Snow, and gets a new name, Reek. For his troubles, Ramsay gets to become a proper Bolton and helps Dad take over the North. A little further north still, Jon Snow climbs the wall with some wildlings, but when he's asked to prove his loyalty to them by killing a man, he runs away and Egret shoots him with a few arrows, but definitely doesn't kill him on purpose, because she still loves him. <laughs> Game of Thrones Season 4 the season kicks off with Jerk King Joffrey getting married to Marjorie. Although he's poisoned at his own wedding, and because Sansa flees King's Landing with Littlefinger, suspicion falls to her unwilling husband Tyrion. There's a trial, and Tyrion chooses his fate to be decided by combat, again. It just so happens that sex pest Prince Oberyn of Dawn is in town looking for revenge for the murder of his sister. He agrees to fight on Tyrion's behalf because his opponent is Gregor Clegane, the man who killed his sibling. The fight... Uh, it doesn't end well for either of them, but Jaime, now returned to King's Landing, frees Tyrion anyway. Hmm. On his way out, Tyrion strangles his former lover Shay because she's been shagging his father, who he murders with a crossbow while he's sat on the Kazi. Over in the warm place, Daenerys is struggling to rule Slaver's Bay because her dragons keep barbecuing people, which tends to upset the locals. And Jorah, her best mate, turns out to be a spy sent from King's Landing to keep an eye on her, so she banishes him and locks her dragons in a cave. In the north, Littlefinger smuggles Sansa to the Eyrie, where he marries Ned's sister-in-law to become Lord of the Vale. He then murders Ned's sister-in-law after trying it on with Sansa. Hmm. Finally, Arya and the Hound decide to part ways after Brienne shows up and has a massive fight with Clegane Jr. and leaves him for dead. Meanwhile, the final Stark, well, I say final, Rickon doesn't really count, Bran, continues his journey of much tedium to the far north, where he finds a magic tree and climbs inside it with his equally tedious travelling companions Mira and Jojen. Finally, there's a massive battle as the army of wildlings try to take the wall, but ultimately fail in an epic fight that sees Jon and Egret reunited before she's killed by a child, and he realises, finally, that he genuinely loves her. After the battle, Jon walks out to assassinate the leader of the wildlings, Mance Raider, but before he gets the chance... Stannis Baratheon turns up with an army he bought by taking a loan out from the bank. Game of Thrones Season 5 Tiny product of incest Tommen is now king, and lovely Marjorie is due to marry him. However, there's a group of religious nutbars in King's Landing, and they imprison Cersei for incest, Loris Tyrell for bumming, and Marjorie for lying about Loris and being too pretty. Cersei eventually goes free but has to walk back to the Red Keep in the nude, but when she arrives he's greeted by zombie Gregor Clegane, so that's nice. Meanwhile, brother Jaime travels to Dawn with Bronn to rescue his daughter Marcella, but despite agreeing her release, she is killed by the former lover of sex pest Prince Oberon. Are you keeping up? In the hot place, having smuggled out of King's Landing, Tyrion and Spymaster Varys hook up with Daenerys to join her cause. She's struggling with a rebellion of slave masters, which claims the life of Sir Barristan, so eventually she accepts their help. Sir Jorah wants to be Daenerys' friend again, so he becomes a gladiator, like Russell Crowe, fights in a tournament to win her trust, and then foils an assassination attempt on her life. When shit gets really serious at the tournament, one of Daenerys' dragons flies in to rescue her, and she then rides him to relative safety, miles away in the middle of a rampaging Dothraki horde. In the north, Littlefinger gives Sansa to Ramsay Bolton, who takes her as a bride, then takes her against her will on the wedding night. Theon helps her to escape, and the two jump off the wall of Winterfell together. In other Stark news, Arya heads to Bravos to join the Faceless Men, who are a bunch of assassins. She trains well, but breaks the rules by killing old enemy Merin Trant, and is blinded for her troubles. Stannis tries to march south to reclaim his kingdom, but loses most of his army in a blizzard, and, despite burning his daughter alive for good luck, is eventually defeated and murdered by Brienne, who finds him wounded in the woods. In the far north, Jon Snow calls a truce with the wildlings and agrees to let them live on the posh side of the wall, but most of them are attacked and killed at a village called Hardhome by the White Walkers. The Night's Watch aren't too keen on Jon's love for the wild folk, and they stab him to death at the end of the season. Or do they? Game of Thrones Season 6 Sansa and Theon escape Winterfell with a little help from... The bloody woman! <laughs> Sansa heads to Castle Black, where she emotionally reunites with bastard brother Jon before helping him to raise an army to fight bastard husband Ramsay in the fittingly titled Battle of the Bastards. Wait, isn't Jon Snow dead? Well, he was, but Melisandre resurrects him because Jon is way too pretty to die. Anyway, during the Battle of the Bastards, Ramsay kills his prisoner Rickon Stark. Tormund bites a man's ear off, and Jon eventually wins with a little unexpected help from the Knights of the Vale. Ramsay has his face eaten off, and the Starks rule Winterfell again. In Bravos, Arya gets her sight back, fails to murder an actor, and finally kills off her longtime tormentor, the Waif. 
he returns to Westeros, serves Walder Frey his sons in a pie, and murders him. Delicious. In other good news for Arya, the Hound is back, and his wit is as sharp as his axe. You're shit at dying, you know that. <laughs> Over in the east, Daenerys gets captured by the Dothraki, murders all the Carls and her own clothes, and takes the army of horse lords for herself. She gets back to Marine just in time to defeat the slavers and raise a fleet big enough to sail to Westeros. How does she get so many ships? Yara and Theon Greyjoy, after being chased off by Mad Uncle Euron, have made an alliance with her. In King's Landing, Cersei tries to outsmart the High Sparrow, fails, and so just blows him up, and a bunch of other major characters with a shitload of wildfire. Tommen gets sad about the death of his wife Marjorie and throws himself out of the Red Keep Tower. But this rather upsets the Queen of Thorns, who allies with Dawn against the Lannisters, over the death of her granddaughter. Meanwhile, Jaime spends a few episodes liberating Riverrun from the Blackfish, with Bronn keeping him company with some solid one-liners. You have better instincts than any officer in the Lannister army. That's like saying I have a bigger cock than anyone in the Unsullied army. Sam and Gilly have the most awkward dinner party ever with Daddy Tarly before Sam steals the family sword and heads off to the local library. Finally, north of the wall, Bran learns to see into the past, present and future by messing about with an old tree. He learns that Jon Snow is actually the son of Ned Stark's sister and the Mad King's son, and he finally discovers why Hodor is called Hodor. Yes, Hodor means hold the door, which is what Mira shouts as the gentle giant sacrifices himself to allow her and Bran to escape an attack from the Night King in a scene I could barely watch through all the tears. Game of Thrones Season 7 Daenerys arrives in Westeros, finally, and breaks into her old family home at Dragonstone. And, over at the Twins, Arya finally gets her revenge on House Frey for their antics at the Red Wedding and poisons them... well, well, she poisons all of them. When people ask you what happened here... Tell them the North remembers. Tell them winter came for House Frey. Danny then sends her allies, the Dornish and the Greyjoys, to attack King's Landing, but their fleet is sunk by Mad Uncle Euron, the sexy pirate, who captures Yara and Ilaria Sand and one of her daughters, kills the other two. Theon runs away. <laughs> Danny sends Grey Worm to take Casterly Rock, but the Lannisters are busy sacking Highgarden, murdering the pensioner who lives there and stealing all her valuables. By this point, the Mother of Dragons is really fucked off, so she rides her dragon Drogon to burn up all the Lannisters on the Gold Road. Jaime and Bronn manage to get the gold back to King's Landing, barely escaping with their lives, and Daenerys roasts the hell out of Randall Tarly and his son Dickon. Dracarys. In King's Landing, Euron presents Ilaria and her daughter as prisoners in exchange for a marriage promise from Cersei. Jaime does not approve. Does she like it gentle or rough? The finger in the bum. Cersei poisons Ilaria's daughter and makes her watch, then pays off her debt to the Iron Bank. Like a reckless student with a Funko Pop addiction, she then borrows more cash to pay for her mercenary army. Oh, and she's pregnant again, probably, which is nice. Jamie is the daddy. The things I do for love. Jon Snow goes to visit Danny on Dragonstone, but refuses to bend the knee to her. Danny lets her mine for Dragonglass to kill the White Walkers, and the pair slowly get cosy. Wasn't the word I was thinking of, but... Danny is chuffed with her military victory, but Tyrion and Jon convince her to offer a truce with Cersei so they can fight the massive army of the undead coming down from the north. Trouble is, Cersei won't believe them without proof, so Jon, Tormund, Sejora, freshly cured from his greyscale by Sam Tarly, the Hound, Beric Dondarrion, Thoros of Myr, MC Hammer, Mary Berry, Snoop Dogg and Gendry, yeah he's back by the way, all head up north to try and kidnap a zombie. They grab a white, bag it up, but everything goes a bit tits up and most of them end up marooned in the middle of a frozen lake while Gendry goes running back for help. He makes it to the wall in record time. We need to send a raven! Davos sends a raven to Daenerys. She flies up to rescue them. The Night King kills one of her dragons and promptly resurrects it to fight for his army. <laughs> Uncle Benjen shows up randomly and dies. All in the space of about five minutes. At the end of the season, the Night King uses the undead Viserion and the dragon to smash a gap in the wall and march his army straight through. While all this is happening up north, loads of people reunite in King's Landing. Brong makes a few cock jokes. Come on, you can suck his magic cock later. And all the main players meet in the dragon pit to discuss a truce. Cersei doesn't agree. Tyrion talks around. She does agree. 
then reveals she doesn't agree and was lying anyway. Let the monsters kill each other. And while they battle in the north, we take back the lands that belong to us. And then what? And then we rule. Jamie doesn't like her lying, so he leaves to fight the army of the dead without her. In Winterfell, Bran arrives home and starts being all moody and emo. Arya arrives home too after a brief chat with Ed Sheeran, Hot Pie and Nymeria, and she reunites with Sansa. Bran just doesn't seem bothered. And you came home. Littlefinger tries to drive a wedge between the Stark sisters, but the pair secretly plot against Littlefinger and trick him into showing up at a trial at the Great Hall. The trial's for him. He's guilty of being a scheming bastard, and Arya executes him. <laughs> Finally, after clearing up masses of shit in the Citadel, <coughs> and curing Sejora of his grayscale, Sam leaves with Gilly and Little Sam, but not before discovering a rather interesting fact about Jon Snow. His parents, Rhaegar Targaryen and Lyanna Stark, were actually married, which makes Jon Snow a legit Targaryen, heir to the Iron Throne and nephew to Daenerys. Oh well, at least he didn't start having sex with his auntie. Uh, uh, oh. Oh dear. And now you're all caught up on Game of Thrones and ready for season 8. He's never been a bastard. He's the heir to the Iron Throne. 